Hello everyone and welcome to a math Monday. I'm so excited. I love math. I love reading about math. I love talking about math. So yeah, I'm going to share a fun math book that I read recently and maybe you guys will pick it up and find it interesting as well. So today I am going to be reviewing The Mathematical Tourist, New and Updated Snapshot of Modern Mathematics by Ivers Peterson. This is a 250 page book and it's kind of an overview of different topics in mathematics and some of the research and development and progress that's been made in the fields. This book for me was a three star read and I really want to start off with actually talking about the negatives about it because I think that they deserve attention and maybe it'll clarify why it is a three star read. So I pulled this book off the shelf. I didn't look at anything beyond the cover, The Mathematical Tourist, new and updated snapshot of modern mathematics. Looks interesting, pulled it off, began reading it. And I got part way in, um, actually I even marked the page with a sticky note, when the author begins talking about the unsolved Poincaré conjecture. And I thought, no, wait a second, that was solved in the early 2000s, I thought. So I got on Wikipedia and I looked it up and sure enough, the Poincaré conjecture had a proof put out by, I think his name was Gregory Perlman in 2002. I remember learning about this in my, I think it was my number theory class. And I was like, I, wait, why are they saying it's unsolved? Read through the Wikipedia article to make sure I wasn't making stuff up. And I went to the front of this book to see when this was published, which I probably should have done first. And this was published, I believe in 1998. Yes, I think there was a first edition in 1988 and then 1998. And this really is why this book got a three star instead of a four star because I really enjoyed this book. And that three star, that dropping down from four star to three star is something that is just inevitable, I think, if you write nonfiction. Or not inevitable, but it's very, very hard to avoid and it's no fault of the author or the book. When you're talking about developments in a field or this book talks a lot about some computer science stuff that's going on, it will become obsolete. New information will come out conjectures will have proofs put forward for them, the field advances and moves on. And I think reading a book from 1998, this would have been very, very interesting. It was very, very interesting today, but it would have been more interesting to read maybe in the early 2000s when this was more cutting edge than it is now. We're now 20 years, about over 20 years past when this book was first written. So new and updated snapshots of modern mathematics, the field has moved on from then. However, I don't think it's moved on enough or that the book, the information contained in this is so bad that this isn't worth giving it a read. It's just one of those things that when you read, you realize probably would have garnered a higher review from me when it was closer to the publication date. Or if this author put out a book that was updated to now, maybe put one out in 2018, which I don't believe he has. I tried to look into that. It would have been more relevant. Um, I think that that would have gotten a higher review from me. This, The only reason this has a few flaws in my opinion is really just due to the age of the book, which is something that can't be helped. Your book is going to age, you're gonna put it out a certain date and then time passes, that's how it works. So unfortunately, just due to the year I'm reading it and the year this book was put out, a lot has changed and a lot has gone past. There's been a lot of advancements. Like I've mentioned, this book covers a lot of stuff in computer science, which obviously that field has advanced greatly since 1998. And just some of the stuff in mathematics has been proven or we built on what we've learned at the time, which can result in some stuff being maybe slightly out of date. But I don't think it's enough to stop anyone from reading it or for me to not recommend it. Remember, a three-star review is not a bad review for me. Most books are three-star. It was enjoyable. It was good. But it maybe wasn't the, the best book I've read. Or there were some flaws or things that I found with it. In this case, it's just the unavoidable flaw of aging. The book is aging and therefore some things are no longer accurate. So that was the first thing I wanted to point out before I start talking about all the things this book did very, very well because I really enjoyed this book besides the age. I really liked it. The audience for this book, um, this book is written maybe for someone who's in high school or early college and looking for some, maybe they, they've covered, so in high school you cover a lot of I don't know how to say this, maybe basics. So you do algebra, maybe you get into calculus, you do some geometry, but there's a lot more to mathematics than those fields. Maybe, yeah, so you got calculus, at least I, I topped out somewhere in like 
the Calc 1, Calc 2 when I compare it to my college classes at the end of high school, but there's so much more to mathematics and algebra, calculus, and geometry. And I think that if you are considering, if you're maybe in high school and have really enjoyed math and want to know what else is in the field, or just as a casual reader, as an adult, you enjoyed math or enjoy reading about math, but you're not really sure what's out there beyond yeah, algebra, calculus, geometry, kind of the things that we're exposed to in high school. This would be a very, very good book for you. It kind of gives a really good overview of other aspects of mathematics, other fields and branches of mathematics that exist without getting too technical that you get lost in the weeds, but giving you enough information to really point you in different directions. So if you're interested in something in this book, you have enough information to go pursue other books or other topics or look into it online, which I think is really, really good. So I think the the audience for this is maybe people who are considering pursuing mathematics further in their free time, either as a degree or yeah, in your free time as an adult, or you are just curious as to other branches of mathematics that maybe weren't exposed, you weren't exposed to as much in school. So I personally wanted to take a few minutes to talk about the areas of this book that I liked best. So we will start which with the first one, which was topology. I, I pointed I bookmarked the section, but that was just more for me to remember to talk about it. We have the classic picture of the coffee mug turning into the donut, um, which they are the same object in topology. So topology was not a course I took in college. That was not, there wasn't a course offered just on topology, I don't believe. There may have been, it might have been like a seminar. I didn't take it for some reason, probably conflicted with another class. So that's an area that I don't have as much exposure to. All my exposure to, to topology has been what was mentioned in other classes in college or what I've read uh, um, <clears throat> after college, just reading books on mathematics. And it definitely is a field that I want to explore more. I don't believe my current public library has a lot of fields, on, has a lot of books on that field, but I'm going to be able to place holds from other libraries to read more about it. It's a field I want to delve more into. And I feel like this book gives people a very simple glance into that field and enough to intrigue you, at least enough enough to intrigue me. Maybe I'm a little biased because it's something I'm already interested in knowing more about. But yeah, I thought that section was very, very well done. The illustrations are very, very, very well done. It helped me visualize a lot of the stuff. I feel like in mathematics, me seeing a visualization, and probably a lot of people seeing that visualization is very, very helpful. And I think the book did a very good job on that topic. The next section that I think this book did a very, very good job on, which I'll just show one knots. So knot theory. Uh, again, my curriculum to get my bachelor's degree in mathematics did not require me to take a class specifically on knot theory. There was a professor who was very interested in, in knot theory, so he mentioned a lot of it or brought it up as applicable. And during a summer research program, some individuals did some work on knot theory and then they gave discussions or displayed their work around the campus afterwards. So I have been exposed to knot theory before, but I haven't gone too much further into it. It's also been mentioned in some of the more popular mathematics books that I've read. However, I haven't really gone too far in depth. This book is probably the most in-depth I've gone on knot theory. And like topology, I'm very, very interested in learning more about it. I think it's a field that's very, very interesting to me. It... It's a little confusing, at least from my perspective. Well, the basics don't seem very confusing. When they first, the first couple introductory paragraphs, you're like, okay, I'm following, but you can quickly see how complex and interesting the field might get. So I would love to get a book on knot theory. And I think, again, again, we're at topology and knot theory. Those are two things that this book gives a very, very good, concise overview. while giving you enough information that if you want to explore the topic further, you now have the knowledge and resources to do so, which I think it's just those two alone gave it such a good review. If it wasn't for the age of this book, those two topics alone would have got, got it a four-star review. In fact, those two sections of the book alone are probably four-star reads that I really recommend. And I think if you have any interest in what I'm talking about, you're like, how does a, how's a coffee cup and a donut the same shape or, yeah, knots, knots are mathematics. If you heard me say that and are interested, this book might be worth getting just to read those two sections and then using that knowledge go out and get other books on it. I think it's just a very, very good introduction that, um, yeah, anyone can, it's accessible to anybody and it involves fields of mathematics that other people um, who didn't do maybe a degree in mathematics at the university level might not know exist. The There are other aspects of this book that I'm not gonna go into. They talk a lot about fractals and they talk, um, yeah, fractals, what are the other things they talk about? A lot of stuff about computer science, <clears throat> a lot of programs and stuff. Obviously all the computer science stuff will interesting is 
a little dated. This is again 1998, the field's moved on, but it's very interesting to see where the science was in 1998 and then maybe looking at what we have now and kind of where we progress from that. So the parts of this book that talk about computer science, while I did read it, I kept in mind this is 20 years old and the field has definitely moved on from that. Fractals, again, very, very interesting. I've read some other books on fractals, um, so nothing in the fractal section was incredibly new to me, I don't think, but it's still very, very interesting. Obviously, the author is having a lot of fun with whatever color printer he had, because we have a lot of colorful fractals in here on the colored pages. Obviously, yeah, someone was having a lot of fun with their computer when they built this. Just pretty good to look at. Um, if you're interested in fractals, there's lots of good books out there on fractals. The final topic I wanted to touch on, which is something that maybe a lot of people have heard of, and that I've read about in other books, which is The Game of Life by John Conway. This is some, it's just a basic computer program which illustrates the mathematical concepts. And it's, it's very, very interesting, but what I wanted to point out in this book is it's one of the best examples, one of the best books that gives very clear examples and explains the examples. So I really, really enjoyed that. The fact that I'm still hearing about The Game of Life in like, the 2000s or like the 2010s. Is that what you call it? The teens? I don't really know how to refer to that decade. The fact that the game of life is still showing up in mathematical books that are published now tells me that there's some level of relevance to that, or at least it was a key concept in mathematics that led to some stuff. So I think having a clear and concise understanding of it can still be relevant, even if that concept was maybe newer in 1998 than it is in 2000. Um, 20, 2021, 2022. So that was the final section that I wanted to call out. I feel like its explanation on the game of life and a lot of examples of it were very well done. And it also talks about a lot of computer programs that were, I don't want to say similar, but like game of life, same vein as game of life that I thought were really, really interesting and well done. So yeah, those were the sections that I thought this book did really, really well. This book is definitely worth pulling off the shelf. If you are looking to get involved in mathematics beyond what you did in, at your high school level, this is the book for you. It gives very clear, concise examples on a lot of these areas that <clears throat> we aren't exposed to in the K-12 through system, at least not here in the United States. However, if I were you, I might skim over the computer science section. No fault of the author, I'm not saying this was a bad book on at the time it's just as a little dated and that's why it gets a three-star review for me instead of a four-star otherwise grab this book read those sections a section especially the section on topology and not theory very very interesting and let me know what you think if you enjoyed this book if you read this book or if you have any comments on this book please let me know otherwise have a great day everybody